Hello and good day. My name is JC Gotinga. I am a reporter for Rappler. Uh, you are watching Rappler Talk. And today, uh, I am honored to have uh, Jenny Hamora. She's a theater producer, director, actress. She's one of the co-founders of Red Turnip Theater. That's a theater company that's a member of Phil Stage. And she is also the representative of the Theater Actors Guild to the Open House Fundraiser Group. So she's going to talk to us about uh, how this pandemic has made an impact on the theater industry. Tayo mga Pilipino, we pride ourselves in being uh, the troubadours of this side of the world. Uh, our performers have given us a lot of pride and um, a lot of honor and recognition worldwide. And we want to check up on them. How are they doing? And in the interest of full disclosure, Jenny is my friend. And uh, I used to also work in the theater. So it's a little bit like um, touching back home for me. So Jen, hi. Magandang hi. araw sa'yo. Kamusta kayo? <laughs> How are you guys doing? Um, uh, we're working. Uh, we're working despite the lockdown. We're working from our homes. Um, yeah, I didn't know things could get so busy. Uh, <laughs> yeah, when the lockdown started, um, you know, uh, all the theater shows got canceled. And uh, at first, we were just staying home. Um, but then, uh, you know, a number of people started mobilizing because we realized that, you know, most of us lost our jobs. We're like, oh, okay. <laughs> and that, right. uh, that it wasn't going to be for the short term. Yeah. Um, how are you guys feeling? Because uh, one of the biggest concerns is how do people earn money during this lockdown? Not everyone can work from home. It's difficult to imagine theater in a work from home setup. So can you walk us through um, the nitty gritty of how you guys are trying to survive at this time? Okay. Uh, first of all, we go through the stages of grief. <laughs> <laughs> talaga, talaga. Uh, may mga gabi na... Really, I mean, personally, you know, we will, we really ha are, are banding together as a community and also personally, just, uh, we're, you know, artists, naman, very emotional people. So, uh, getting over that first and then, you know, deciding to, uh, to work, to take action at, um, the, the situation on the, from the outset looks very grim. Because, you know, we just, uh, of course, we found out that even if we enter into a GCQ, the theaters will remain closed. And we don't know um, when, we will be, when we will be allowed to open again. So, uh, what, uh, for example, Phil Stage is um, drafting safety protocols already so that we can already be proactive in, you know, communicating with the DOH that, you know, we have plans that, uh, once we are allowed to open, we have these safety protocols in place. We we are aware of the of the public uh, public health, public safety, um, um, and yeah, it's about just going through those waves of uh, waves of grief, and then waves of realizing that there are opportunities there are opportunities somewhere there. Sometimes uh, it's hidden. Uh, one of the opportunities, though, at what that we saw at the beginning of the pandemic was going migrating online, especially for our open house fundraiser. Um, that is a fundraiser that um, Artist Welfare Project, Theater Actors Guild, Phil Stage, Ticket to Me, um, uh, Silly People's Improv Theater, and Third World Improv. We all band together to um, create this fundraiser to give two thousand pesos each. To every performing arts worker who needed it, who had a who had a gig canceled, so um, uh, so we realized we could do things online. We could uh, do script readings. We were doing um, interactive conversations about theater, roundtable discussions uh, with stage managers. Um, still, everything theater related, but um, using Zoom using Facebook Live. So that was one opportunity we, we saw and that we used in order to raise funds. Uh, what was yeah. the response like? Uh, marami naman bang, nag, you know, nag, was it donations or was it actual paying for, for the consumption of content? Um, so all the content is free. Uh, so, so everything is donations. We are at 800. Now we aim to raise 1 million to be able to give 
2,000 each to 500 workers. We are now at 887,000. Congratulations. Uh, oh, thank you. And I really thank everybody who has tuned in, you know, because any amount counts. Um, and, uh, wow, I got lost. <laughs> it's all right. It's all right. Um, ayun, so we were talking about how, um, how you've been trying to cope. And so at this point, donations are coming in. You've banded together the different companies uh, to have, to, you know, to get, have each oh, other's yeah. back. I wanted to say, Palaya, yeah, that um, more than 100 artists have also given their talent and time for free to be able to put up the content for Open House. Um, and then we also have about 60 people organizing, uh, organizing the events and organizing the technicals and all that. So it's a lot of people. So it, it does sound like a lot of work. Um, the, thing, the question now is sustainability. Um, this might be a subject we would want to come back to later on because medyo, I'm sure my integrity, but broad strokes for the moment. Um, how long do you think you guys are going to be able to hold up and continue being artists and not have to look for other jobs uh, while this pandemic lasts, lasts? Sorry, and I'm not even talking about just the lockdowns or the ECQ or even the GCQ. But everyone's talking about a new normal, how all of a sudden we realize the world is not going to come back uh, to the state it was before the virus hit us. And it's difficult to imagine people sitting side by side in theaters. Mm -hmm. uh, so yeah. uh, Yon, uh, how do you envision moving forward? Um, well, on May 15, uh, at the end of the ECQ, we're releasing a survey uh, Hopefully through the Ticket World database, and you're so you're hitting all those people who used to go to theater, and then we're finding out what their attitudes are going to be. Uh, you know, uh, once the GCQ is lifted, once there's a vaccine, are they still going to be willing to enter the theater? Um, so uh, we're going to wait for the results of that. Um, <laughs> uh, at the same time. We cannot, uh, open house is ending on May 15. We know, you know, there's already a fatigue setting in. There's donor fatigue, but there's also fatigue uh, on the part of the organizers. And all of the, the organizers are also transitioning into working on more, um, uh, more substantial, more long-term, first of all, emergency assistance from the government. Uh, and then also, hopefully, transitioning open house into uh, into a more um, uh, a more sustainable community, wherein the content. You're right. We can't go on giving everything for free, right? So we have to transition it into something that can still be an emergency fund for artists, but at the same time, uh, something that can pay the people. Who will be providing content? So the so sana maging two prong na yung open house. Um, another good thing about uh, this time is that all the creative industries are really banding together now. Uh, Bayanihan Musikahan uh, gave generously to um, to open house uh, to be able to uh, give to even the live events workers, you know, bar musicians. Um, and, uh, and even the live event sector, we're all really going to start to band together to create even bigger, uh, I guess you should, it's still called fundraisers, bigger fundraisers, which mm. will probably have, again, two prong, uh, where you're earning donations, but at the same time, maybe the company or the artists that provide the content do get something as well for their work um hmm. there is a group um there is i lost my gig ph it's uh it's a site that's been collecting data on all the members of the creative industry that have lost work uh so far 245 million pesos has been lost um but hopefully they're also going to become an online marketplace for artists to be able to you know, to be able to offer 
paid tutorials one on one. So yeah, hopefully that's actually I signed up. <laughs> yeah, mm-hmm. so it's 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 good. It's good. It's transitioning, and it's transitioning mm-hmm. very soon because we really can't sustain this model at the moment. Okay, I'll take a step back, Saglet, dun sa the the quote unquote pandemic response, and let's look at what artists, <clears throat> excuse me, what artists are able to give to the community. At this time, ngayon na people are at home. Uh, people have been watching these concerts from artists, online performances, um, and I have to say, I'm sure no one would argue with me that it's been very helpful to people in coping, dealing, accepting, processing uh, what we're all collectively going through as a human race, de ba? Uh, and yan naman yung that's what artists give, de ba? I mean, movies, music. Plays, uh, musicals, novels, songs. What artists give is, you know, a mirror to the human soul. And, siempre, that's very necessary right now. Which is why people are we people have been more generous, more willing to donate. You know, like for example, Lea Salonga or Regine Velasquez does a concert on Facebook and they earn millions, de ba, in donations. Usually for the frontliners, and that's very noble. It's for for the doctors, ganyan. But yung nga, I, uh, some have been saying that at some point you guys are going to have to start looking after yourselves, and that's what you've been doing. But please talk to us about uh, wh- wh- what 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 your have you have you have somehow connected with the audience still during this time, uh, doing your um, activities online. Um, Yeah, pretty much it. Uh, are you still in touch with your audience? And have you what 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 has been the response? Uh, I think that the immediate. I guess there are ser- there are several spheres. No, how you know here's the theater community, and then these were the theater goers, the loyal ones, and then you you go uh, outward toward their networks. Uh, open house has been reaching, of course, the immediate community. It's been very cathartic for us to be able to, yeah, talk to each other. Uh, most of our events, we us- usually have a live component where we can interact through the comment section, uh, discuss the issues at hand, uh, how the pandemic is affecting us. Um, at the same time, uh, the events being shared through Film Stage or for the various uh, member companies of Film Stage, we're hitting the The loyal theater subscribers. I am not quite sure about uh, outside of that. I think there have been uh, several events. We're really trying. For example, we had an event where we auctioned off roles to non-theater people uh, for a reading of Twelfth Night. There were two roles wherein uh, we had two newcomers to the theater community, but they usually work. Uh, you know, they. They're no, they work nowhere near, <laughs> near theaters, but that was a good way to really reach out to a new set of people, and uh, a new set of people watched Twelfth Night, cheering on their friends, um, and then also fairly soon, uh, we have another event which has uh, more a component that reaches more to the outside. So we we're gonna have I want to call me Tita actresses. You know, that's Joe Ampil, Mylene Dyson, Agot Isidro, Cherry Pie Picache. And then I Want TV is uh, tying up with Open House. Uh, we're going to stream through I Want and uh, we're hopefully reaching out to uh, TV viewers who will now get um, a little bit of a taste of theater because we'll also have uh, an event where the Call Me Titas meet the Kundiman Party Titas. Mm. So... Uh, Yeah, so those are the ways in which we're reach sort of reaching out of the that those first two layers of this uh, theater going community, and I hope we can really expand it more. You know, there's a discussion about uh, whether what we're doing now is a, a new medium for the long run, or whether it's a stop, kind of like a quote unquote stop gap uh, measure. Um, It's it's a good discussion to have, and we don't have to have answers now. But it seems like we can use this uh, opportunity to really expand expand the theater going network 
so you know that you know people uh, those who hadn't seen Kundiman Party can kind of get a taste of it. You know. I was going to ask um, to quote my boss, si Maria Reza. She said she always tells us in crisis, crisis in uh, in crisis there is opportunity or crisis presents opportunity. And I was going to ask you about that because oh nga, we are seeing something that might turn out to be a totally different animal from now. And as you have said, um, we don't need to know right now. You just have to ride the wave at the moment. Uh, which leads me to the next point that I wanted to ask you is that um, I don't want to use the word struggle, but for the most part in the Philippine theater, it's been a matter of preaching the gospel, quote unquote, getting more people to get involved in the theater, to to watch, to perform. Um, it's good when it's a free mall show and people are passing by and they sit down and watch, but sometimes it's a different thing when you need to get them to buy tickets and you cannot sustain an enterprise such as a theater company if there aren't people buying tickets. Please walk us through how the theater industry, the theater community was a few weeks ago before the pandemic hit, because despite everything, uh, it, uh, it was thriving and there were shows lined up, as you have said, and now all of, all of a sudden they're obliterated. So what was it like working in the theater industry right before this pandemic happened? Um, okay, Let's see, I've been working in the theater industry for I think more than 20 years now. And it's uh, throughout those years, it's also changed. Um, recently, yeah, there have been a spate of young producers uh, idealistic, <laughs> idealistic, and uh, yeah, we were we were willing to go um, with more intimate theater. Um, but the, as a producer, okay, um, it was getting. It's always been a challenge to lower ticket prices. We would love to um, get ticket prices as low as possible. But the reason why they were so high before was that really um, it's been difficult to get sponsorships to help lower that cost or to get uh, other kinds of grants or financial support. So ticket prices were kind of high. It was sort of, um, so you're sort of cutting off a certain number of people that can't afford, you know, a 1,000 peso ticket. So I think that was one of the, the downsides to how it was going. Um, we still had, um, fortunately, uh, also in terms of theater education, uh, groups like Repertory Philippines, PETA, we still had their programs for children, uh, for young people, and that's extremely important. And fortunately, also, it's becoming very, very salient right now how uh, this online medium actually can be used to reach younger people to reach um, to be used for educational purposes in uh, in theater education for younger people. I uh, so we will really pursue that. Um, hopefully, uh, reaching more students uh, with higher quality, more engaging kinds of uh, theater educational materials. So we're really because that's the that's the basis of building your theater market. And really, it's just it's you growing up in theater. It's like me. It's like me watching plays when I was back in back in grade school. That's how I learned to love it, really. Um, as in, now, in terms of being a freelance worker, because I also work as an actor and as a director, um, there was actually a Freelancers Protection Act that was being proposed in Congress, and I had attended a committee hearing on it uh, very, uh, yeah, pretty recently. And so that was very welcome because we were still having a lot of incidents of freelancers not getting paid for work done. Still, you know, it's like. Um, because we don't have unions, we really have no protection. Uh, it's even, you know, it's even a blessing uh, if you have a written contract. <laughs> you got no, got no right. right, right, yeah. right. Uh, uh, Theater Actors Guild was all about, you know, trying to get that, trying to actually create a, a contract template that actors could have in hand so they could present it to whoever hired them. But yeah, still recently we had still a lot of incidents, and not just uh, actors. Uh, it's uh, uh, even other gig workers. You'll get a text. 
to perform at an event, you'll perform and not get paid. Or you'll get paid three years later. So right. the Freelancers Protection Act was, you know, going to put uh, measures to make sure you get paid and in a timely manner. Uh, so that's what it was like. Yeah. To benefit our audience, because uh, most of the time, if I'm not mistaken, di ba, pag sinabi natin sa mga tao, artist, performer, someone who is a theater actor or actress, um, tingin nila um, mayaman, social, um, which could be very far removed from the reality na it's not an 8 to 5 job. Um, you don't have a show, you don't get paid. And unlike in, unlike in the US or in the UK or some other countries where they where they have theater districts who put on a show that run for two years, three years. Here, the longest a show would run would be two months, tama ba? Extended run pa yon. Ah. <laughs> More often than not, it's one month na weekends lang. So you rehearse for a month or two, perform the show for another month or two. So the process is like you have a job for, what, three to four months, but you're only paid for the shows. You get a minimal rehearsal fee, which is how much is it now? Like five hundred a day or less? Oh, it averages, let's say two hundred a day. Okay, right, the yeah. it, it's it's it, it boggles the mind when we tell people na artists more often than not, if you're not the big name headliner artist, doesn't mean you're any less talented. But if you're not those big name headliner artists, sometimes you really almost work for peanuts. Sorry yeah. for the term, parang ganun eh, compared to yeah, what you could earn. Yeah. If you were corporate, you're in the office, diba? Right? And and I find it ironic that parents send their kids to theater workshops, but they wouldn't want them to work as theater professionals. <laughs> like, go to the workshop in the summer, but you know, get a get a get a they would say get a real job, right? So ayun yung tanong ngayon na um given this new reality, <laughs> diba? Uh given this new reality, um what is labor? What are labor conditions like? And what do you think they are going to be for actors? Do you think this new normal is going to make it more difficult for actors to charge? Will there be fewer jobs up for grabs? Uh, or do you think otherwise? Nah, maybe this is in, maybe there's a boom coming up, uh, though it might seem counterintuitive. What do you think? I would like to think that we would still maintain the same number of jobs, but probably we would use people use people or use people's time more efficiently mm-hmm. uh, whether it be in preparing for a theater show or in preparing for a TV show you know uh, I think we need to plan better as producers so that you're not always calling people you know healing not in some meetings oh mm-hmm. meeting <laughs> Uh, and then you need everybody there. <laughs> yes. Uh, uh, so I think we really need to be very conscious now about uh, how uh, how we use people's time and how we gather them in terms of planning for uh, production. I really hope we don't have to uh, to decrease the number of jobs um, for available. Hopefully, uh, right? Yeah, hopefully. Hopefully. Um I mean, we, we did the survey in some of the companies in Phil Stage. Um, and, you know, uh, producers are still hopeful that, uh, that we can, because, uh, as, you know, as the great playwright Floyd Quinto said, you know, this is the live experience is who we are, really. It's, <laughs> right. it's why we all, why, it's why we all yes. did this. Profession. Yes. We really don't do it to earn money. We earn money in different ways. We try to do commercials. We try to do TV shows. Uh, whatever sidelines that um, can sustain your that theater job for like three months. Because really, they're just giving you, parang in a way, you're earning transport money <laughs> yes. to get to your rehearsal. Right. Uh, so. Um, we really still aim to go back to be able to provide live experiences. So that still would need stage hands. That still needs your sound technicians and your lighting technicians. But yeah, hopefully all being used in a more efficient way. 
So we need that vaccine for the virus, no? <laughs> we need that vaccine. We need that vaccine. Because we will miss it. I mean, people will miss it. Now, people are talking about, oh, what are you going to do as soon as the lockdown ends? But we need to clarify that when the lockdown ends, doesn't mean the virus isn't going around anymore, sadly. Uh-huh. So, but people are raring to do something outside. And I'm sure there's that energy that someone puts on a show, people are going to line up and watch a show, right? I think, yeah, there, physical, there di- physical distancing to think of, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, already you're seeing that naman in, diba, in mga where you buy food, people are just like, ah, I gotta go out and get to the grocery. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> Just Uh-oh. looking for a way to uh, get out there. Although there are some people also who are ano naman. There's a sector that's like, oh, I don't think I'm gonna go out there. Right. <laughs> yeah. Um, there. You mentioned, you know, yung, the essence of it is the live experience, diba? That's really what sets theater apart from all the other, I wanna say mediums, because hindi nga mediated yung theater. There's no medium when it comes to theater. It's live, it's immediate. Uh, how important is it? People are now putting out their content online. And even, even on Broadway, diba, there was this show of, uh, of Stephen Sondheim's work and it's all the big stars all performing on Zoom, was it? Or something like that. Um, so people are saying, oh, you can, you can transport pala theater online. You can do it live online. It's still somehow live, but electronic. And, and that's really good. And let, we're not judging it, right? But what is it, what do you think it is about the live theater experience that makes it necessary. Yeah, it's really the communication between actors and between actors and the audience. There is really that magic that happens and uh, that there is a communication. It's not verbal, but uh, as an actor and then there's an audience member there, you're, uh, you're both communicating something. Uh, audiences are... There, we're both listening to each other and both reacting. Uh, no matter how invisible it might seem, there really is that energy uh, that all of us, I think, thrive off and that we all feel. Also, in terms of the craft of acting, I think it re- it's quite impossible to learn. Like if you were just thinking about getting into acting right now, I think it would. It's pretty impossible to learn acting without acting against a live person in front of you. Kahit na sabi mo nang gusto mong mag-act sa TV or theater, yung mga yung mga beginning lessons mo about learning learning how to listen, learning how to uh, just relax and react, learning how to uh, be able to make a text your own, and be able to communicate. You really need that person across from you. Uh, so, yeah, the, it's, this is a great the medium right now, being able to do readings. I, it's great for directors and actors who have sort of been in the game for some time. Uh, but, yeah, if, if you're just beginning, it, it might be difficult to kind of get a grasp of what theater is if you haven't had that, you know, live experience. Um, I'll venture this question. Uh, it might be intuitive to ask, but what's your gut feel? How long are we going to have to stay away? How long are you gonna? How long are you guys gonna have to stay away from rehearsals and going to the theater? Um, do you see it coming back? Do you, at all? And if at all, how soon? Um, I think for for the theater producers that create material uh, specifically targeted for students, uh, they have, I think they have a clearer picture. Because, yeah, for me, theater, uh, theater education is extremely important. I mean, theater is also a great way to learn about other things like politics. Uh, so, those that are geared towards students, um, really, we, we, we have to aim to get those. But, of course, being very, very responsible. We have mm-hmm. to aim to get those up as soon as possible. Of course, we can start digitally. That's, I, I think there's nothing wrong with that, actually. 
uh, because we, I mean, these are children. So, you know, all yes. the more we have to protect our kids. So right. you can you can do that online. I, I think that's fine starting there. For other, for example, my theater group, uh, Red Turnip Theater, we really have to, we have to, I think, just be quiet for a while and sort of listen to the society, listen to what's going on because um, cannot just produce for producing sake because I, the, because we want to cast ourselves or because we want to produce the material that we want. We really have to think about what people need and not just the community, not just the immediate theater community, but the entire community. Because theater is supposed to be for everybody. So uh, we really have to listen to that first. Uh, because if we're just producing for no one, then it's useless. So we need to figure out what people need to hear about, what people need to cathart about before we just start producing again. Um, for, uh, my, for my small theater group, it's a little bit easier because uh, we're a mom and pop operation. We don't have employees. So actually, and then we, we're all freelancers as well. So we can earn our own keep and not have to worry about employees. So it's a bit easier to say, okay, let's take a hiatus, think about it. Um, but uh, I, I don't know how it is really, the experience of being a bigger theater company with employees to think about. Uh, yeah. Um, it's true. And as you have said, you know, these questions right now, we really don't have an answer to them. But uh, is that an actual word, cathart? No, because that's my next. <laughs> that's my next question, which I think is the all-encompassing question here. Is that um, yes, you said that you want to find out as as the artist, you want to find out what people will want to cathart from, and there is going to be obviously we are all going to be dealing with our the trauma from this pandemic. Yun nga kung matatapos na siya agad. We don't know how long. But people are gonna need storytelling, right? So, please talk to us about that. Na, uh, and here's where, here's where we're kindred spirits, I guess. And I'm a believer that, you know, storytelling is necessary. You can't go without it. Uh, so, kahit anong mangyari, people are gonna tell stories to one another. So, from your vantage point, if someone who's, someone who, you do that for a living, and you, you, all, I use the word activist. You're an activist for this. You don't only just do theater for a living. You also endeavor to keep theater, put theater out there, make theater a more viable way of living and working here in our country. So, you know, with that in mind, that, um, you know, uh, how, how confident or not are you about its survival? Oh, uh, survival. Oh, whoa. I'm 100% confident about its survival. <laughs> you know, it's like we started in the BC times. <laughs> and uh, uh, so just because of the theater's track record, I'm confident that it will survive. Of course, this is, a, this is quite a different animal no? from a war, from a world war. This, this coronavirus is, uh, yeah, it's quite different. So I, I'm not discounting that fact. Um, but so, somehow, we'll survive. And yeah, like uh, we were seeing a lot of memes, right? Na parang, what would you do in the quarantine if there weren't art, if there weren't books to read, if there were, if you didn't... I agree. <laughs> on I agree. Yeah. Uh -huh, yeah. Yeah. Um, but... It's strange now that actually there's a phenomenon that don't you find yourself when you watch something on Netflix, there's, it's a little weird that there's a little bit of a disconnect. Sometimes uh, when I watch a, a show and I'm like, this was at a this was made and written for a different time. <laughs> it's think, it's starting to become like that. Uh oh, <laughs> yeah, I think there's some there's some material like that, but of course there's also some material that, uh, of course, if you do material that has 
stood the test of time, like your classics, your, your Shakespeare's and your Ibsen's. There's something about them that will transcend anything, really. Yeah, and then yeah, with some in some newer work, like some Netflix shows, you're like, mm, this is strange. I don't really see. I don't. I'm not connecting. Uh, yeah, suddenly so, up the bad. Uh, yeah, so I think suddenly our reality is different. We're in a different setting. We're in yeah, different. Yeah, it's different. It's about you. the values. It's about the values of the of human beings, uh, really. So I think you have to tap into that with, with, with whatever stories you're telling. It's the values that you hold. That, that stand the test of time that you have to write about. Um, yeah, because fads and trends, they're called fads and trends for a reason. Uh, so, but there's, yeah, there's always room for stories uh, because that's, that's what makes us human. Uh, otherwise, we'll just be, we'll just be robots. <laughs> <laughs> You know, uh, the, soul, the soul needs something else. You know, the soul needs the soul needs prayer. The soul needs something other than numbers and data and, and right. policies. Right. Uh, yes. Our bodies need food, but uh, we need to be fed with with spiritual things, with with uh, with things that can move us. That can move us to grieve, to cathart. Because <laughs> 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 kailangan natin yun, kailangan natin ilabas right. eh. Please, I mean, I, I, I really, uh, I'm also a mental health advocate uh, and someone that deals with mental health issues. It's not, it is no joke, huh, to 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 say that, oh, you know, you just be strong through this. No, you really have to, you have to process this. Amen. Yeah, yeah. If the process this in your soul, in your heart, you can cry. You can cry. Uh, I heard of a uh, Kumail Nanjani's wife who survived cancer and all. She says that she she gives herself room to be upset, purely upset, twenty minutes a day, something like that. Uh-huh. You're just upset. You're just ranting. You're crying, and then you get so tired that uh, that you get so tired that at least. Wow, you've just let that go already. You've let go all that. Uh, yeah, but we need stories because I have that uh, good story anyway. A good story yes. reaches reaches through time, reaches through space, tugs at your heart to be able to make you realize you're feeling something. Parang oh, okay. Parang you can ano pala, This character verbalizes. Exactly what I was feeling that I could not put words to before. Meron, uh, we need stories for that. Um, we need stories to remind us also about you know, what it is like to be a human being. It's so very easy now to just forget what it is to be a human being and to uh, and to realize that we need each other. <laughs> so easy right to be on our devices right um, and to think of the death toll and the number of confirmed cases as mere numbers and then you realize these are people yeah these these are people it's it's really it's it's hard to i think almost a part of us well personally speaking lang, almost a part of me does not want to delve in you know oh those 500 Five hundred people who passed away, the five hundred families who are grieving. You know, it's like uh, it's almost too much to bear. Uh, but you know, sometimes we we have to, and stories really have a way of doing that. Like when you watch something like Schindler's List, diba? Parang yes, you have you have to face those things sometimes, and then realize things about how you are as a person, how you are as a person in society. Yeah. Amen, Jenny. Amen. <laughs> and on that, on that note, um, I guess what I my takeaway from this is we can count on you to be there and tell these stories, the stories that are happening now, our story now during the pandemic. There's going to be stories to be sure. And we will want to hear these stories when we're hopefully soon, sooner rather than later, when we're out of it, when we come out of it. 
So thank you very much. Actually, thank you. I have to acknowledge you because you you reminded me that you know you reminded me behind. I said you have you have the medium, you have film, TV, you have theater, but then yeah, behind all that is the need for stories. So Amen. thank you for that. And thank you, Jenny. We'll talk more later after after this show. But uh, that's it for now for Rappler Talk. Uh, thank you for joining us. Uh, keep watching our page for more conversations like this.